Hi, this is Lyra from Soma Laboratory. And while technically it's a synth, it's unlike any other synth I've ever seen. Forget about East Coast versus West Coast. This synth sounds like it's from outer space. Just a bit, I promise. Now, I'll be using terms like voice, LFO, FM, and feedback, but don't expect those terms to translate into what you're used to hearing or feeling using regular synths. The experience of using a Lyra is very visceral and emotional, and I've often found myself wanting a cigarette after using it and I don't even smoke. If you're looking for nice linear knob motion, chromatic scales, or even normal modulation behavior, you're not going to find it here. Lyra is called an organismic synth, and indeed it feels like you're interacting with something that's alive, more in control of itself than under your control, even though there isn't a single random LFO here that I know of. Rather, multiple levels of cross-feedback and modulation is the name of the game here, and it can get unpredictable quite fast, which is part of the point. Let me give a shot at explaining at what's going on here. Lyra starts simple with eight voices arranged in groups of two, four, and eight. In terms of waveform, they're quite simple. They have waveforms that range from a simple triangle to sort of like a shark toothish square wave. You can't really control any of the voices with an external keyboard. Uh, you can tune them to notes, as I did here. So you can play chords, but each voice is tuned to its own pitch, which you adjust with a non-quantized knob. So it's up to you to figure out the pitch, whether using a tuner or by ear, uh, and that's easier to do when you compare it to other voices. Now, even if you do set it to nice, polite pitches, the minute you start modulating stuff or introducing the LFO, things get out of control anyway. Okay, let's continue with the overview. You can set the pitch for each of the voices with the tuning knobs. From then on, they work in groups of twos. You have waveform control for each couple of oscillators, and that's called the sharp control. You have modulation for each two voices. That has a bunch of modulation sources, which we'll talk about in a bit. So sharp and mod work in groups of two voices each. Then you have pitch and hold, which work in groups of four. So hold will sustain all four notes in a group, and pitch will transpose them all together, though not necessarily always keeping the distance between them. It depends what they're tuned to. And then these three switches, total feedback, vibrato, and this extra modulation work across all eight voices simultaneously. Beyond that, you've got an LFO, which applies both to the voices and the delay section. The delay section is an analog style digital delay. We'll talk about that later on. Then you've got overdrive here, and finally volume control. On the back, Lyra or Lyra, depending on where you're from, is mono with headphone and line outs. You have inputs to process external audio through the effects section and a few CV and gate controls, though the CV for the voices doesn't track vault for octave. I'll explain how that works later on. So that's the overview. Let's dive in. Let's start with the individual voices. They're controlled with these conductive 
touch controls. Voltage comes out of here and then any other contact you touch, either through your body or your hand, will play the voices. Each voice has two envelope options, either fast or slow. Fast means that it will sense touch based on when you touch it and how much skin you apply. So a little bit of skin will cause a long attack and a lot will cause a more immediate one. And I'm gonna lick my finger here. If it's wet, it's even faster. And then when you turn off fast, it'll take the note a while to decay. This switch position also impacts hold. So remember, hold brings up all four voices. Now you'll notice that when it's in fast position, nothing happens up until around one o'clock. And then all the voices rather quickly on the knob come in. Right, and then we have a, a bit more of level control. Now, any couple of voices that you turn into slow or turn fast off, those will gradually come in as we turn the hold knob. Right, around here. And then the other two will join them as we move beyond one or two o'clock. I would have rather had level or hold control individually for each of the voices. There's a workaround for that though. If you get a coin and place it on the contact, you can hold individual notes and then, um, you know, continue to mess around with whatever you want. So you can get individual holds, but it does cost a little extra. The voice pairs have different frequency ranges with the voices on the left being better at beefy basses and uh, these four go up to sort of the mid ranges that won't quite annoy your dog, but the voices on the right uh, will certainly do the trick if you try. Like I mentioned before, pitch will move the voices and they do maintain the range occasionally, but if you're at the extreme, not so much, especially if they're farther apart. Now, all this is true, and up until now, Lyra sort of behaves like a regular synth until we introduce the concept of cross-modulation. So, as you may remember, each pair of voices has its own mod knob, four mods for four couples. Each mod knob has an associated switch. The switch has three positions. The middle position is off. Top position takes a couple of other voices as the modulation source. And the bottom position has three options depending on this switch and whether something is plugged into the back, into the modulation CV in the back. And that's why the label here says LFO feedback or CV, right? If it's in this position and the total feedback is down, then the modulation source is the LFO. If the total feedback is up, the modulation source is the audio, the total audio coming out of Lyra. And these two mod sources are overridden if you've got CV coming into the voices input in the back. So let's start with a switch in the up position. The numbers here designate which voices impact the modulation of this couple. So five and six means that voices five and six will modulate the frequency of these two voices. Let's go through this modulation maybe with a different pair, just so you can see what I mean by the different stages that happen as you turn this knob, right? So it starts out like regular FM. And then notice that when it gets to a certain spot, it'll sort of start jumping between harmonics. And then, right, go to an overdrive stage. Now imagine that this is happening between these two, to each other, right? And sort of it's these little sweet spots in the middle, not to mention when you start messing with the waveforms. Right? Let's start this craziness. And then when you start pitching everything together. Right? Now in normal FM synths, once you connect an oscillator to another one, it's constantly modulating it. But here, that isn't the case, right? It's only when you play 
this oscillator or this voice, that's when the modulation starts. Now because the modulation only happens when audio is coming out of a voice, the attack stages really change <laughs> when there's modulation, right? Depending on how you touch the individual contacts. And with little fine tuning and a little reverb, it can sound almost like an electric guitar, but a really crazy one. So these two switches control the cross modulation for these two pairs, these two switches will enable cross modulation for these two pairs, and this switch, as you can see, will start modulating from 3, 4 to 5, 6, and then 7, 8 to 1, 2, right? So if we bring up the holds for these guys, I mean, it can be all forms of madness, right? Anything from a single tone, as you can hear to, depending on mod depths. The vibrato function, by the way, will activate vibrato for all eight voices. Slightly different vibrato for each voice to create what you hear now, which is pretty nice. There's also this sort of little glitch when you turn it off and on, which also, I think, gives this a lot of character. So as you may remember, when the total feedback switch is in the up position, then the modulation source, when this switch is down, is the feedback, the audio coming out of Lyra. Right? Feeding back as a modulation source. But when it's down, then the mod source is the LFO. So let's talk about the LFO. The Hyper LFO is a combination of two square wave LFOs that can be intertwined either by way of an OR function, which is an addition, or an AND function, which is a multiplication. In the middle spot, by the way, it's off. You control the rate for each of the two square LFOs with these knobs, right? And by default, uh, they don't do anything to each other, but in the sync position, there's a soft FM between the two, which increases their rate as well. However, if you do want variety beyond these two basic square shapes, you can easily connect an external LFO into Lyra. More on that later. So this is the one hyper LFO in Lyra, and that can be applied either to any one of the four voices or to the mod depths in the delay section. So let's talk about the delay section. You have a mix control knob to control whether you hear the delay or not. There's feedback that applies to both delay lines, right? And will oscillate rather quickly and nicely.
And then, like I said before, the delay times can be adjusted to anything from chorus-like effects all the way to longer delay times. And it's nice to have a combination of the two delay times. There are two modulation sources for the different delay taps. You've got the central position, which is off, and then when you flick it up, that is the audio coming out of the delay itself. So that can be kind of subtle, and the second modulation source is the Hyper LFO, so if we switch it to the bottom position, and this switch is on top, then the source is the AND output of the Hyper LFO. Right? And this is one of my favorite things about Lyra, right? How the Hyper LFO impacts delay modulation. So that's a square wave and output modulating the delay times. And then if you flick the switch down, you get a triangle wave LFO, which is a smoothed out triangle sum of the two LFOs. Finally, after the delay section, we have a drive section with a mix control. So when the mix is down, you don't hear the drive, but as you bring the mix knob in, you'll hear more and more of the drive. That can be quite nice. So let's talk about connectivity in the back. External in process audio in through the delay and distortion circuits, which means you can drive any external audio source. Or add delay to it. Now there's no tempo sync for the delay. So if you want any, anything beyond a chorus style effect and you want to sync that up, you'll need to do that manually. So, once we have something normal going on, let's bring in the craziness with the LFO. For some good old Lyra Madness. The hold gate lets you apply hold with control voltage, which is really nice, as it can let you create special effects like tremolo. So in this little setup, I'm sending gate into Lyra's gate hold input and different rates will create different types of tremolos and the character of the tremolo can be determined by the position of the hold knob. The CV delay input replaces the modulation source for the two delay lines which I think significantly opens up Lyra and lets you turn the delay into a melodic part of the instrument. In this case I'll still use two square wave LFOs but they're in sync and notice if I tune the delay, it becomes like an instrument. And I can use Div Kids mutes here to mash together in Mixverter the two square wave LFOs from Pam's workout to create some pretty interesting results.
CV Voices lets you control the pitch of all the voices that have their modulation turned on. But as I mentioned before, don't expect volt per octave control here. This is a modulating input, not a tone precise VCO control that covers the entire frequency range. So in this setup, I've pre-programmed four steps in Mux Slicer here by Bifaco, just by ear. I was able to get about an octave and a half or two octaves of control. And yeah, the voltage levels are entirely non-linear. But it is possible to create note sequences with an external voltage sequencer. Incoming voltage only impacts those voices that have their mod source in the down position. So you can still play with the others. Okay, so let's talk about pros and cons. Lyra is a synth that controls you or gets out of control more than it's something you can tame. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. Now obviously there are no presets. Forget about even trying to recall something you did here. Getting a predictable, repeatable result here is almost impossible. During the making of this video, one of Lyra's voices went on an amazing harmonic tangent and I have yet to figure out how to recreate that. Lyra does lend itself to insta-horror movie sound tracks and monster sound effects, but can also be a tame and lovely ambient drone machine. With external CV modulation, you can stretch it even more. In terms of cons, there are just things you need to be aware of. If you want to play simple melodies or chords, there are other synths that will serve you better. There's no quantization here, and even if you think you've tuned a voice to a specific pitch, there's no guarantee that modulating it won't throw it somewhere else completely. This is a unique instrument with its quirks. I mean, I would have liked to see more precise control over voice levels and pitch, and I would have certainly loved for this to be in stereo, by the way. But other than that, Lyra really is its own thing. The madness of the voices in the LFOs, coupled with an excellent sounding delay and distortion, makes, I think, for quite an experience. Now, I'm not saying you should buy this, but I definitely recommend going to a store or to a friend that has one, closing the door behind you, cranking up the speakers and having a very organismic experience. Talking about special experiences, if you're into synths, you should definitely consider checking out my book of electronic music ideas, tips and tricks available to people who support this channel on Patreon. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section below. Hit like if you found this organismic and make sure to ring the bell if you don't want to miss the next one. Thanks for watching.